First, let's create a speed.net core web API project. I will launch the Visual Studio, then create the project with default settings. Now, let's start it. I am launching Visual Studio 2019. Click the Create a New Project button. There are many templates available. I am going to create ASP.NET Core Web API project. So, looking for that template. This is the template for ASP.NET Core Web API with C Sharp. I would like to select this. With the selection, move next. Project location. Select this folder, select folder. With the settings, move next. I am going to use the latest version, namely the current version of the .NET, .NET 5. With the selection, now I am ready to create this project. Click the Create Project button. It takes some time. The project has been created successfully. This is Solution Explorer window. There are several items, including folder and files. I am going to explain each item inside the Solution Explorer, including folder and individual files. Let's do that. Folder and the file structure of the API. This is the Solution Explorer window from the project we just created. If we expand this window, many hidden files will be displayed as shown in the screenshot. Default API consists of dependencies, framework applications, packages, as well as many folders and the files. Note that some folders or files might be different if we create the same project by using another IDE. However, each item in the Solution Explorer will be explained in the following section. The first item is Connected Services. This connects and retrieves metadata from a WCF service in the current solution locally or on a network and generate this source code file for a WCF client proxy that you can use to access the service. This is very important and a very convenient addition to the default project. By using disconnected services, we can discover WCF services. Now, let's look at the dependencies. Actually, now I am market dependencies and the packages together. Actually, if we generate a document for an API by using Swagger without analyzer, we would see the details only for the status code of 200. However, with API analyzer, it is possible to get a warning for all written statements of the actions. For example, status codes of 204, 400 and 404 etc. So we are going to use analyzer with Swagger. If we use analyzer with Swagger and we can generate useful documents and the useful messages for every status codes. The next item is frameworks. We can create .NET Core application and configure multiple target frameworks so that it can run with all the configured target frameworks. There are two framework applications in this default project. The first one is Microsoft ASP.NET Core application. This is for ASP.NET web applications. The second one is Microsoft.NET Core application. This is for .NET Core API. The next item is properties folder. In default, 
inside the properties folder there are only one file namely launcher settings json file the settings in this file are going to be used when we run the dotnet core application either from visual studio or by using dotnet core cli note that launch settings json file is only used within the local development machine this is the content of the launch settings json file environment variable is set in this file override those set in the system environment there are three objectives in this file the first one is iis system the second one is profilers the third one is asp.net core web api now let's see each object the first one is settings for iis when we launch the application inside visual studio however in this time without installation of the swagger the application will be used this url namely the application will be launched by using the, this url the second object is profiles this is also settings for iis express when we run the application from visual studio either by pressing ctrl plus f5 or just f5 then by default the profile with command name iis express will be used however in default the swagger package is installed therefore the settings inside this profile object will be used namely the command name is iis express the launcher browser is true and the launcher url will be swagger note that in the settings we don't have application url namely in the settings the application will be launched within the swagger ui the third one is asp.net core web api the name of the object is same with the project name namely the settings for crystal server if we run the asp.net core application using dotnet core cli for example dotnet run command then the profile with the command name project will be used note that if the swagger is installed at that time launch url swagger will be used if the swagger is not installed at that time this application url will be used the next item is controllers folder in default settings there are only one weather forecast controller of course later we will add our customized controller next item is app settings json the default json configuration provider loads configuration in the following order first app settings json second app settings dot environment json for example the app settings production json and app settings development json files the environment version of the file is loaded based on the ihosting environment dot environment name namely app settings dot environment json values override keys in app settings json for example by default in development app settings dot development json configuration overwrites values found in app settings json in production app settings dot production json configuration overwrites values found in app settings json so it will change in based on the environment name now let's look at program files this is one of the most important files in this application actually the program file is a class this is the class content in the program class we have a method namely the main method therefore this is the entry point of the whole application inside the main method we are calling a method create host builder this is the create host builder method inside this method we are calling create default builder and the create web host defaults methods to create default builder 
and uh, configure web host defaults methods configure a host with a set of default options such as use crystal as the web server and enable iis integration load the configuration from app set demos app set demos dot environment name json environment variables command line arguments and other configuration sources finally send the login output to the console and the debugging providers therefore the program class is very important inside the program class we have the main method named the entry point of the application now let's look at the startup class asp.net core apps configure and launch a host the host is responsible for app startup and lifetime management at the minimum the host configures a server and the request processing pipeline the host can also set up login dependency injection and the configuration all of these procedures are managed inside the startup class next we will look at the startup class the startup file is one of the most important files in the application actually the startup file is a class ASP.NET Core apps uses a startup class, which is named startup by convention. The startup class optionally includes a configure service method to configure the app's services. A service is a reusable component that provides app functionality. Services are registered in configure services and consumed across the app via dependency injection or application services. The startup class also includes a configure method to create the app's request processing pipeline. In general, we use single startup constructor inside the startup class. However, in practice, multiple startup constructor is possible, namely startup development, startup production, startup staging. We can use different or multiple startup constructor startup plus environment suffix we can create corresponding startup constructor now let's see the startup class in details this is the content of the startup class now let's look at the startup constructor in default it is injecting by configuration service in practice we can inject other services as well for example we can inject iweb host environment and we can also inject iHost environment. Now we are injecting i configuration service only. In default, there are two methods in this class. The first one is configure services, the second one is configure. The configure services and the configure. As I mentioned earlier, configure services method is the place we can register as many as services. We can register many services here. However, we can register services in an extension method and then we can call that extension method here and it also gives us the same functionality. Namely, related groups of registration can be moved to an extension method to register services. The second method is configure. This method uses to configure the HTTP request pipeline. Namely, this pipeline is composed as a series of middleware components. Each component performs operations on an HTTP context and either invokes the next middleware in the pipeline or terminates the request. Namely, all request is comes to inside this method and the related middleware process that request is. So we call this request processing pipeline. And this two method is very important. And this is the startup class. In summary, we have startup constructor. We are injecting our configuration service. Then we have two methods. One is configure services. There we can register services. And then second method is configure and the where is the place of a series of middlewares and this middleware will process incoming requests so this class is very important 
and the starting point of the application.